In the previous video, we introduced the gambler's fallacy and showed that it can be viewed as a failure to recognize or remember that the outcomes of a fair chance setup must be independent of one another, so the history of past outcomes can have no effect on the probability of the next outcome. Now I want to look more closely at this concept of a fair chance setup. I said that it entails the concept of independence, but really it entails two concepts. It also entails the notion that the outcomes are unbiased. To call a chance setup fair is to say two things. One, that the outcomes are unbiased, and two, that the outcomes are independent. These are not the same thing. Let me show you why. To say the outcomes are unbiased is to say that in the long run, each of the possible outcomes shows up as often as any other. It's natural to use relative frequency language in this case, so we can say that in the long run, the relative frequency of each outcome is equal to that of any other outcome. So here's a way of capturing the notion of a biased chance setup. We can talk about a coin being biased in favor of heads. Maybe because of the way the coin was made, the probability of the coin landing heads is 65% instead of 50%. And correspondingly, the probability of landing tails is 35% instead of 50%. This coin will land heads a lot more often than it lands tails. So an unbiased coin has this probability distribution over the two outcomes. Half the time it lands heads, on average, and half the time it lands tails. Now this is not the same as saying that the outcomes are independent. Here's why. Look at the sequence of coin tosses. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. Let's assume it goes on like this, always alternating heads and tails. Now, does this describe an unbiased set of outcomes? Yes, it does. 50% of the time, the coin lands heads, and 50% of the time, it lands tails. So the long-run behavior doesn't favor one outcome over the other. This makes it unbiased. But clearly, these coin tosses are not independent. Remember what independence means. The outcomes of a chance setup are independent if the probability of a given outcome is not influenced by the history of previous outcomes. In other words, given the previous outcome, I should not be able to predict the next outcome, any better than chance. But of course I can with this set. If it's heads, then I know that the next one will be tails, and vice versa. Given heads, the probability that the next toss is tails is 100%, not 50%. This notion of independence can be expressed in different ways, and each gives us some additional insight into the concept. We can say, for example, that independence entails that there are no regularities in the outcomes that you could use to improve your ability to predict the next outcome. Another way this is expressed is to say that the system retains no memory of its history of past outcomes. For computer scientists, it can be natural to think in terms of the algorithmic complexity of a string. A string of symbols that is probabilistically independent has the feature that there is no algorithm, no set of instructions that can generate that sequence as output that is shorter than the original sequence itself. When you have predictive regularities, these regularities can be captured in a rule that compresses the amount of information you need to generate the sequence. For an independent sequence, there are no regularities of this sort, so you can't compress the sequence any further than it already is. Now all of this starts to sound like we're defining the concept of a random sequence, and that's exactly right. This is a way of defining randomness. We say that if outcomes are genuinely independent, then the resulting sequence is a genuinely random sequence. So now we have some concepts that we can use to clarify what we mean by a fair chance setup. We say that a fair chance setup is one for which it is impossible to construct a gambling system. Now what does this mean? A gambling system is impossible if there is, in principle, no betting system that is guaranteed to win. Now, why is this impossible? Because of the randomness, the lack of predictive regularities in the outcomes. Another way to say that a gambling system is impossible is to say that there is no selection of subsequences or subsets of outcomes that can influence the probability of a specific outcome. Why? Because all of the subsequences are independent which is another way of saying that outcomes are genuinely random. And still another way to say it is that the expected payoff of a fair gamble is always zero. That means that if you bet on the outcomes of a fair chance setup, you may win or lose money in the short run, but in the long run, your wins and losses will even out. So the expected payoff is zero. Now, it can be helpful to see an example of a system that does permit a gambling system. Imagine a chance set up with coins where there's memory in the system. Specifically, the system remembers when you have a head followed by a tail. So when that happens, the next toss is always a tail. That's rule number one. And it remembers when you have a tail followed by a head. 
When that happens, the next toss is always ahead. If the system has this kind of memory, then you can implement a betting system that always wins. Let's start tossing coins. My first toss is a head. I won't bet yet until I see what comes next. Next toss is a tail, and now I see an opening to bet. I bet on tails because I know the system's memory, and lo and behold, the next toss lands tails and I win the bet. Now I wait for the next toss. It's tails. I don't bet yet because I have no rule for predicting the next outcome, so I wait for the next toss. It's heads. So now I can bet because I can apply a rule too. I'll bet on heads. Next toss is heads and I win again. Next toss is tails so I can bet again. And so on. You can see how by exploiting my knowledge of the system's memory, I can set up a betting system that lets me win every time. In general, if it's possible to come up with a betting system that is guaranteed to have one side come out a winner in the long run, then by definition, it's not a fair chance setup. So going back to our concept of a fair chance setup, we see that because fairness has two components to it, there are a number of different ways that a setup can be unfair. You can have independent events but biased outcomes, like in the top right. You can have outcomes that are unbiased but not independent, like in the bottom left. You can have outcomes that are both biased and not independent. Let me show you an example of each. It's not hard to make loaded dice, where one side tends to land more frequently than the others. Con artists and magicians have used these for centuries. You do this by adding weight to the opposite side. This gives you a chance setup that is biased, but the outcomes are still independent. So even if, say, there's an increased probability that the dice will land a 5, the dice still has no memory of its past rolls, so there's no way to predict the outcomes any better than chance. The probabilities will be different, but the outcomes are still independent. Now if we look at the lower left quadrant, we want an example where the outcomes are unbiased, but not independent. The textbook examples that fit this profile involve sampling without replacement. This is common with card games. Before I draw any cards, the chance of drawing a heart is 1 in 4, since there are 13 hearts in a deck of 52. Now I draw the top card, and it's the Queen of Hearts. I don't replace it, I just put it on the table. And now I ask myself, what are the odds that the next card is going to be a heart? Well, it's not going to be 1 in 4 anymore. It's going to be a little bit less, since I've lost one of the hearts. So the outcomes are not independent. As you keep drawing cards, the probability of any remaining card showing up on the next draw changes. Now, if we're looking for an example of a setup that is both biased and not independent, then you could just combine sampling without replacement with the biased set of outcomes. For example, you could have a raffle where you draw names on slips of paper from a jar to hand out prizes. If you draw names but don't replace them, then the outcomes are not independent. And if, say, three of the slips have the name Jane on them and only two of the slips have the name John, then the outcomes are also biased in favor of Jane. So this is a little artificial, but you get the idea. So, having looked at all these ways that a chance setup can be unfair, you might be wondering what would count as a fair chance setup. Well, by definition, a fair setup will be one where the outcomes are both unbiased and independent of one another. The standard examples are things like coin tosses, dice rolls, and spins of a roulette wheel. Now, if you're being strict, you need to qualify this claim since a perfectly fair chance setup is an idealization. So what we're saying is that coin tosses and dice rolls and roulette spins are good approximations of a fair chance setup, good enough for the purposes that we normally use them, which is gambling or playing games that require an approximation to a perfectly fair chance setup. Now, with these concepts under our belts, in the next video I'd like to turn to a question that my students inevitably ask at this stage, which is about the relationship between the idealized probability model we've been talking about and a real physical system like a coin or a dice. So we'll turn to that now.